Now let's see if we can find a method to find the intervals of increase and decrease of a function. Before we do that, we need to all agree up on what we mean by increasing or decreasing. So what does it really mean for a function f to be increasing on an interval? Well, I guess what you have in mind if we took off an increasing function is something that looks like that. In other words, the graph rises as we move from left to right. So let's try to formalize this idea that the graph rises as we move from left to right. Moving from left to right means that if I pick a value x1, I move from x1 to a point on its right, in other words, a value of x that is greater. And if I do that, the corresponding y values should rise, right? should get bigger. In other words, if x1 is less than x2, that means I move from left to right from x1 to x2, then f of x1 should be less than f of x2, that is, I'm moving up for the y value. In other words, on an open interval i, a function f is increasing if for any pair x1, x2 that I pick in this interval, whenever x1 is less than x2, then f of x1 is less than f of x2. In other words, increasing means preservation of inequalities. Similarly, a decreasing function is something that would look like that. In other words, when I move from left to right, the graph is going down. So that means if I go from x1 to its right, x2, a value x2 that is greater, then the y values should, should decrease. In other words, f of x2 is going to be smaller than f of x1. In other words, on an open interval i, a function f is decreasing if whenever I pick x1 and x2. If x1 is less than x2, then f of x1 is greater than f of x2. In other words, a decreasing function reverses the direction of inequalities. Okay, so to see if a function is increasing or decreasing, it's a question of whether the function preserves or reverses inequalities. Depending on the expression you have for f, this is not necessarily easy to check. So we need a better um, efficient criterion to decide whether a function is increasing or decreasing. And in the case of a differentiable function, we do have such a simple criterion. Namely, if the derivative of the function is positive on the interval, then the function is increasing on the interval. If the derivative is negative on the interval, then the function is decreasing on the interval. And if the derivative is identically zero on the interval, then the function is constant on the interval. This last point is a converse of sort of the observation we made earlier, that if you have a constant function, then the derivative is zero. Here we see that if the derivative is zero, then the function is constant. So how do we justify this? Uh, this is not very hard to see. So we want to show that, for instance, if we look at the first point, uh, that if the derivative is positive, then the function is increasing on the interval. To show that the function is increasing, we're going to have to pick x1 and x2 uh, in the interval i, where x1 is less than x2. And we are trying to show that f of x1 is less than f of x2. The function f is differentiable on the interval. So that means its restriction to some smaller interval from x1 to x2, for instance, is going to be continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. So we have this condition, which means that we can apply the mean value CRM to the function f on the interval from x1 to x2. The conclusion of the CRM is that there is a value between x1 and x2 where the derivative takes a value f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. We can rewrite this equality as the difference between f of x2 and f of x1 is equal to f prime of c multiplied by the difference between x2 and x1. Our assumption is that x2 is greater than x1, therefore x2 minus x1 here is a positive factor. On the other hand, f prime of c here is the value of the derivative 
at a value c of the interval i. So if I am in the first case where I have assumed that f prime is positive for all x in i, then f prime of c is positive. And therefore, what I have on the right hand side is a product of two positive numbers, therefore it is positive. So what I obtain is that f of x2 minus f of x1 is positive, which I can reinterpret as f of x2 is greater than f of x1. So we have seen that if the derivative is positive, then the function is increasing on the interval. Now, of course, we don't need to change much to verify 2 and 3, because if now the derivative is negative on the interval, then the sign of f prime of c on the right hand side of my equality is negative. So on the right hand side, I have a negative number multiplied by a positive number, I get something negative. That means f of x2 minus f of x1 becomes negative, which can be rephrased as f of x1 is greater than f of x2. In other words, in that case, when the derivative is negative, whenever x1 is less than x2, f of x1 is greater than f of x2. I reverse the inequality. Therefore, I have shown that the function is decreasing. Finally, in the third case, if f prime is identically zero on the interval, that means f prime of c has to be zero. And what I get is that f of x2 minus f of x1 is zero. That is, f of x1 and f of x2 are equal. But this is for any pair of values that I pick in the interval i. So for any x1, x2 I pick, one is greater than the other. I apply this reasoning, I find that they have the same value. And the function takes the same value at these two points. So if this is the case for any two points, that means that the function is constant on the interval.